Hi, Shannon Waller here. I am really happy to introduce David Braithwaite on this special guest episode of Inside Strategic Coach. Now, David is a 10-year veteran of Strategic Coach. He's a 25-year entrepreneur, and he's our newest associate Strategic Coach coach. In this episode, David's going to do a deep dive into the entrepreneurial time system, which will really help you maximize your productivity, make the absolute best use of your time, and most importantly, dramatically increase the quality of your free time. Stay tuned to learn more. So one of the first tools I ever learned was about the entrepreneurial time system. And it came in a really good time for me because at the time I was just expecting our first child. And I had a business that I've been running for years. It was frustrating me because I was spending all the hours that I could trying to run it, trying to manage it, trying to keep clients happy and literally running around like the proverbial hamster in a treadmill. Yeah. And you're going around this wheel and I need, I need to get off that wheel a bit. So the entrepreneurial time system almost gave me permission to look at the time during my working week and also the free time that I had in a different way. So it gave me permission to have time off and not be connected to the work. It gave me an idea as to how to have a focus day where I'm focusing on just what I'm good at and also gave me permission to have the admin time as well. And one of the biggest things that came from this was, first of all, when my son was born, I could spend time with him and I wasn't running around. Ever since he'd been born, I've had that time to spend with him and do whatever I wanted to do. But another huge strategic thing that happened in the business that I'm in is I changed the hours that I work. And we looked at this differently. Instead of doing the normal Monday to Friday, then you have your weekends off, which is how normal people did it. And also working evenings. I used to work a lot of evenings, going out, seeing clients, because that was when they were free. And through working through this tool, I realized that there's another way of looking at this. What if I didn't work evenings anymore so I could be home to see my son before he goes to bed? And actually, those clients that want to see me of an evening, I'll go and see them on a Saturday instead, and I'll have a Friday as a free day and be off. And it's completely revolutionized the way that I do business now. People love seeing me on a Saturday. Guess what? I dress down to go and see the clients now. They consider it as, oh, well, we don't want to take up too much of your weekend. So they're very conservative of the time that I spend with them. And also the clients that I see on those Saturdays, all of them agree to do something with me because they are serious about it. And what's the great thing is I never thought about this before. You think if you go and see a client of an evening and they've come home from work, I'm around their house to go and talk to them or they're in the office to go and talk to them about their financial planning. I'm probably the last person they want to see that day. And I'm literally going to be the last person they probably see that day. They want to come in, relax, have their dinner and see their family. And yet here is David sitting around there trying to do some financial planning. And yet you never look at that in that way, but Strategic Coach and the Entrepreneurial Time System made me rethink that. So now what I'm doing is on Saturdays, I go and see a few clients, I work a shorter day, I no longer work evenings. If you add up the number of hours in a week that I work, just from that one seismic shift, it's hours a week that I've saved and I've become more productive. So from that point of view, it's a win. But unless I had that coaching to look at that and think, but also challenge the normal, what we would consider our status quo, because after we've done it for years, it's worked for years. Let's unravel that and unpick that and think, what could we do differently if we were given the freedom of choosing to do that differently? So for me, that free zone muscle has been huge, massive in the business, massive to the clients, happy clients, happy David, happy son. But I go and see them at their house, they're relaxed, they're in their shorts, they're dressed down and they're like, oh, David's coming round. It's okay, it's a Saturday. And they are way more relaxed. Instead of just thinking, oh, I've just gone to eat dinner, I've just got to do this, I've just home from work. And, and I was the last person they probably wanted to see. As nice as I am, to be fair, I'm not the person you want to see of an evening. I come around and see on a Saturday, it's happy, it's uplifting, it's a positive experience, it's a shorter experience, and it's way more focused because you've got limited time with them on a Saturday. So it's changed the way that we do everything. It's the focus that you have when you're with those clients on that day. But also I have focus days during the week as well. And when you're literally going from one appointment to the next to the next client, you're absolutely on fire. You're in the zone. I've got no distractions from the office because they're not in. So I can't see anybody, I can't talk to anybody from the office. It is complete detachment. It is 100% pure focus. I go in, see the clients, get the job done, and I'm out. 
that's it, that's my day done. I don't do any buffer activities, I don't have any free time on that day, I literally go from one client to the next. So you do get your game face on, for want of a better word. You're in the zone, you're there, you're going from one appointment to the next, to the next, to the next, and it feels great, it doesn't feel like work. I'm working in my unique ability completely on that day, but also during the week when I'm on a focus day as well, I had one recently, I think I had seven appointments back to back. People in the office went, oh, my, you've got seven appointments back, that's a hard day. I'm like, no, this is my perfect day. This is what I want. I don't get distractions, no one's bringing me down. I'm there just doing what I'm best at and what I'm great at and the clients love me for it. And guess what, you're more productive because you're in the zone with clients, they expect to see you on those times, you go through from next to next to next, and you only expect positive outcomes with those people that you meet. Because otherwise you get the buffer activities that come in, they pollute you, they pollute your day, they mess it up a bit, they taint it, they tinge it differently. Whereas if you're there purely on focus activities, you could be great. So three distinct days with the entrepreneurial time system, a free day, a focus day, and a buffer day. So a focus day is doing 80% of what makes you money. If you took all your activities away and you just had three things to do, what would they be? Just do them. And it's eyes open to eyes shut. So it's 24 hours a day, just doing that. Your buffer day is just where you get all the other stuff that you have to do when you run your business. So the writing the checks, the checking the invoices, the staffing things, looking at marketing, anything there that you need to do but isn't necessarily making money yet, you do on a buffer day. And a free day is the best of all because you're free. And again, you have a whole 24 hours, no phones, no emails, no office, no distractions whatsoever. So you can be with the people that you're with or yourself. And it's nothing wrong with having a selfish free day as well. Some of the best days I've actually had have been the selfish ones, where I've just gone off with my friends and done something crazy for a day. But it's having that permission, for want of a better word, to go off and do that. Because until then, I always felt guilty and I wasn't working, or there's always something to do. And these so-called smartphones, they actually make you dumb because they follow you around wherever you go and people can always get you. But guess what? Doesn't mean to say you're gonna be more productive because you certainly won't be. You just become everything to everybody and not being who you want to be for yourself. And the reason why you set up a business in the first place was to have that freedom and it takes that away from you. The true value of implementing it in your life really is having that courage and the confidence to do something different. We're all here in this program because we're looking for something. We want answers, we want help, we want support, we want the group of the people around us that all feel and share how we go through life as well. And it's having that courage and confidence to look at your day-to-day -day diary and say, you know what, this does work. I've got to make some changes. And making those changes is a hard thing to do because you're trying to change habits. But once you change those habits and you start beginning to see progress, then guess what? Progress is a positive thing, but change is hard. But it doesn't mean to say it's a bad thing, it's just changing your mindset, looking at everything slightly differently, and you will see positive results from it straight away. You will see positive results. Least of all on the free days, when suddenly the people that you're with, who always looked at you looking at your phone and checking things and always just doing that email, suddenly you're there with them. How annoying is it when you go to a restaurant and people keep picking up their phones? It's like that, but you were like that all the time, yeah? And suddenly, you're not. You're present with the people that you're with. They'll appreciate it. Your relationships get better, not just with your clients, but also with your friends and family and loved ones. It's only a good thing, but it's having that courage and confidence to make the change. You're on the program for a reason. Action the tools, otherwise you're just paying money to sit in a chair. You need to go away and actually do something, and often that's the hardest thing coming away from here is implementation. But that's the key thing, and having that brave step to, to go over that line and just do something different as a result of being here, and you'll be a different person and a happier one. It's not gonna be easy, okay? It isn't gonna be easy because it's asking you to change a lot of habits that you've, I'm not saying they're bad habits, but it's asking you to change habits that you formed for yourself but not checking your emails and not answering the phone and not being there all the time actually I think makes you more valuable because you're not at everyone's beck and call straight away. But also, I remember there was a sports day. I was at my son's sports day and they're all running a race and all the boys are going along there. And now my son didn't win, but another chap's son did win. The dad missed it because he's too busy looking down at his phone. Now his son, the first thing he's gonna do is look around at his dad and say, did you see that? And the honest answer from the dad was, well, no, I didn't. 
And that, I think, is tough because you're never going to recreate these moments with the people that you want to spend time with. You're in the program for a reason. Use it. Be brave. Step across that threshold and do things that are uncomfortable. Do things that are difficult. And it's only in your head that you think is difficult. But actually, when you get the hang of it, it's easier than you think. But it's progress, not perfection. Yeah. So try it. Just take one free day where you leave the phone at home, especially if you've got kids. They're the greatest police of that ever because you can say to them I'm going to leave that phone in the drawer and you can pay a fine buy them ice cream whatever it is if you touch your phone yeah but they will get behind it and guess what you'll see in their faces how much they want it isn't about the cards the gifts the presents whatever what they want is time and that's all anybody wants and it's the one commodity that we cannot buy but we can give we can be with people and be present when we're with those people and the least that we can do is not have work distracting at the end of the day What's more important, the people that you're with at that moment or maybe a client or a customer that demands that it's there for you? And I have a saying as well that the smartphone, the emails, the phone calls, it's there for the emailers or the callers' convenience, not for yours. Okay? So take that mind shift ahead as well. And then if you want to ring somebody up, that's great, but they're ringing you because it's convenient to them. Doesn't mean to say that you have to react to it. And that's a choice that we make. It's a binary decision. You can choose whether to react to it or not. Just try it, just once. Don't react to it. Be brave and it'll be fine, trust me.